All right, guys, quick question here. How do you find the limit as x approaches 0 of a sine, oh, let's say 8x over x? Now, that should look somewhat familiar to you. We know, because we've memorized it, that the limit as x approaches 0 of sine x over x equals what? 1. Okay. This looks very similar. Now, how do we solve this? Um, what we need to do here is get this limit into this form. Now, this, don't be confused with x. x is just the variable here. Um, it doesn't matter if that's an 8x there uh, and an 8x there or a pi x there and a pi x there. As long as we have the same variable with the same coefficient, in the argument of the sine function and on the denominator, and the limit is approaching zero, uh, excuse me, the x value is approaching zero, the limit will be one. So for instance, if I can get an eight there, let me draw it real fast, really light, I'll erase it. If I can get an eight there, we know that limit will be one. Now how could I get an eight there? Here's how you do it. Let's multiply this limit by one. Eight over eight, okay? Now we have a property of limits that says we can factor in and out um, uh, constants. So we can say that likewise, this is equal, actually let me do one step in the, in, the, in the meantime. Let's say that's the same thing as eight times one over eight times the limit as x approaches zero of sine eight x over x. Now I can choose to bring inside the limit either one of those two constants. Let's say I just want to bring in the one eighth. Where is that going to put? Where is that going to put uh, this argument here? Well, we'll be le left with a eight out front times the limit as x approaches zero, and then I will have the eight on the denominator that I need we know that the limit as x approaches zero of sine of any uh, variable, or oh, oh, in this case of x, has to be x, of x times any number that's not zero divided by uh, that same expression has to be equal to one. So we know that this is equal to, oh, I should be using equal signs here. This is equal to eight times uh, this limit, which we know has to be one, so the answer is eight. And there we go. Uh, you're gonna see that a lot of times. Uh, in, in fact, with the trig, lots of the trig limits we're gonna do, we'll be looking for these familiar things that we've memorized, like we also memorized one that had to do with cosine. So make sure you memorize that those two main ones that I told you to, and as long as you know those, along with some of your properties, of, of trig, your identities, you should be good to go. With a little bit of creativity, you'll be good to go. All right, if you have any questions, let me know.